And so let's dig a little deeper with ESPN and former captain of the Rangers, Ryan Callahan, who joins me now. Thanks for doing this, Ryan. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, a round of applause, even a golf clap from the guys in the studio yeah. for Mr. Callahan. Uh, let's 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 start captain to captain because we just saw what Sidney, uh, excuse me, slip the tongue there as I was just talking about Sidney Crosby with Carolyn Cameron, and he's not playing tonight. But Connor McDavid last night was unbelievable for the Edmonton Oilers. I just wonder, like, as a former captain, you know that in spots like that, people are looking to you to perform. How tough is it to actually come through in those spots? It's it's hard. I mean, in in his instance too, more than anybody else. I mean, he he has a whole team on his shoulders, basically, right? So, yeah. it's his responsibility to lead. It's his responsibility to motivate the guys, you know, in the room. But it's also his responsibility to go on the ice and have performances like that. And that's why he's one of the top players in the league. And that's why I love playoffs so much, and why I wanted to see a guy like Connor McDavid or Drysital or. Guys like Matthews, I'd like to see in the playoffs because I like to see how these top performers perform in pressure situations. You know, when when their back's against the wall or they're down by a goal. And, and we saw last night he steps up in a huge way, forces a game seven, and um, all year he's been doing it. Him and Drysdale have seemed to, you know, drive the bus there all year long. And and again, they're going to have to do it if they want to advance in the, in a game seven. Is there something to, I mean, we up here in Canada have been seeing some of the best players on planet Earth and Matthews and, and Marner and then Drysaddle and McDavid, even Johnny Goudreau struggle when it matters the most in the postseason and in the regular season put up these huge numbers. Is, is there a way to explain to the layperson, to a jabroni like me sitting here, why it's so different from a regular season where these guys put up massive numbers and then it becomes so different when we get to the postseason? Yeah, I guess the, the simple answer would be is matchups and the meanings of the game. Um, everybody wants to play offense, but not everybody wants to defend. But come playoff time, guys want to defend. Uh, there's a lot of pride in defending well. There's a lot of pride in shutting, you know, guys like Matthews down or McDavid down or Goudreau. Uh, defensive players take a lot of pride in that. And when you're going into a building, you know, during the regular season, yeah, you want to shut them down. But it, it just gets risen so much in the playoffs. And um, it, it means so much to a team and to a player that that's in that role or is given that role. And um, and then the flip side of that is is there's the pressure. And especially in some of those Canadian markets where, listen, I did the game, uh, game five in Toronto um, for ESPN. And I sat there in that media room and listened to some of the questions that they're asking Sheldon Keith and asking some of the players. And I chuckled to myself, I'm like, man, it's, it's a different beast here, right? It's there's added pressure. No matter how much you try to push that away or not worry about it, that's in the back of players' minds. They're thinking about it, you know. Right. And especially in a case like Toronto, where they've ran into playoff failures, you know, it's almost that "uh oh, here we go again" feeling. And I'll tell you what, it takes a, a pretty strong mental person to be able to put that aside and go out there and, and still perform. And so far, Matthews and, and Marner have done that in this playoffs. Um, they've they've been really, really good for Toronto, and they still find themselves going into a game seven. Dude, you were the captain for the New York Rangers. Brooksy was there when you were the captain for the Rangers. You're saying it's different in Toronto than it is even in a place like New York where they obviously love the Rangers? 100%. Yeah. It's, it's not even close. Um, you know, in New York, obviously, there's more reporters than normal. I remember when I went to Tampa that... I thought the elevator got stuck after my first game that there are so few reporters in there. But, um, but Toronto's a different beast where it's on TV constantly. It's on the radio constantly. Um, you know, those players can't go outside of that city without being recognized where even a city in New York, you could you could get away from it uh, and, and not have it always in the back of your mind or have people talking to you about it. So it's a it's a real thing there. And you know what, when you're you got the pressure that they have and they have such a good team and you know, they 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 have these expectations and um, they haven't had the success they've they've wanted. It, it's it's tough to perform in that. And, and we're seeing that right now. But um, but I'll tell you what, I mean, watching that game last night, I was I was shocked that, you know, I thought Toronto was going to going to put them away there when they were up late um, They give up that other one. And, and you could just almost sense like, oh, boy, you know, here we go again. We got to go back home. With all that noise and then win a game seven, I'm 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 so excited to watch that game tomorrow night. The 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 flip side of that is, and whenever I'm talking to my kids about like a spot that they're in, I always say pressure is a privilege. Like, 
the the ability to go to a game seven and I get that history will sometimes dictate how you feel it but how do you turn that pressure oh my god we're back at home to oh my god we're back at home for a game seven against the defending two-time Stanley Cup champs I mean as a kid that's probably a situation that you would have relished being you know the best player in the world growing up yeah 100 percent I, I guarantee they're they're feeling that same way yeah. uh, they're going to relish this situation and Listen, some of their past playoff failures that everybody's talking about, it's not the same team. There's a lot of guys on this team that, right. that weren't on those teams. And that drives me nuts as a player when people are like, well, you know, you guys haven't had success in the playoffs in 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is. You're like, well, it wasn't here. We, we weren't here. So <laughs> it really doesn't matter. And even, even this team, if you go back to last year, loss against Montreal, it's, it's a different team. It's a different season. Um, but, but I'll tell you what, it's, there's, there's that pressure is real and guys will feel it and it's it's how you channel it right it's right. do you let it overcome you or do you use it as motivation and it gives you energy um, gives you life uh, and and I've played in a bunch of game sevens and there's there's nothing like it uh, the feeling before the game during the game um, especially late if it's close it's uh, those are the games that you you love to play in and I guarantee Toronto feels the same way going back home in front of that crowd because. As much pressure there is, if they win that game, I mean, could you imagine that building and how loud it's going to be? It'll explode. The, the I heard someone try and explain what a game seven felt like, and and he said, just imagine a playoff game in overtime. As soon as they drop the puck in a game seven, it feels like a playoff game in overtime. Is that is that a good way to describe it for you? It, it is, yeah, and it's it's everything leading up to the game too, right? Your your pregame prep, knowing you're you're going into a game seven. And then in that first 10 minutes, there's so many nerves, right? There's nervous energy, excitement. Um, you try not to get yourself too high. And then and then there's that lull in the middle of the game where it actually kind of does feel like a, a normal hockey game. And then you get to that third period and, and everything gets heightened even more where, you know, every play means so much and, right. and you're basically on the edge of your seat as you're watching. So it's um, it's – until you, I guess you could actually play in one, it's, it's really hard to explain the feeling of, of being in one. Hey, but before I let you go, just um, as you talked about getting over that hump, do, do you yeah. see any parallels between this Leafs team and the Lightning team that, you know, kind of knocked on the door before winning a cup? Yeah, I mean, when I was with the Lightning, I, I always said I felt like us and Toronto were almost mirror images of each other in, in the fact that, we both had so much skill, um, you know, up front and basically could do anything we wanted with the puck at, at all times. And I think the one difference was that Tampa Bay eventually learned that they had to worry about their own end first and not turn the puck over and worry about defense. And it always wasn't about putting the puck in the back of the net. And I think that's what Toronto is trying to learn right now. And, and that's how you have success in playoffs is, you know, you, you get those leads and you hold on to them and, um, it's not all about the flash and dash. And I think Toronto is actually starting to, to realize that now and the way they're playing. And um, I think these teams match up so similar. And, you know, I obviously I give goaltending a little bit of the edge to, to Tampa, obviously with Vasilevsky. But, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Campbell's game five after giving up two early ones. Yeah. And I, I think this series is over. If he doesn't play the way he did at the end of that first period in game five, mm. Um, he was absolutely remarkable and, and a way to bounce back in a, a very, very tough situation. So he was good again last night as well. Maybe the Sorelli goal he'd want back, but um, that hasn't been an issue for Toronto. So it's uh, it's pretty even matched up right now, and, and I'm excited to see it. 13 seasons in the show with the Rangers and the Lightning. First time on our show, but we do appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Awesome. Thanks for having me on.